Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to what I think is session 15 of Fallout Frozen Atom, a Winter of Atom actual play using the rules and adventure by Modifius Entertainment. My name is Elias, the Game Master, and joining me are three lovely individuals, who we'll meet in just a second, but all I really want to say is, uh, thank you for being here tonight, instead of spending your time feverently watching the, uh, the new Fallout TV show, which I think is literally now live on Amazon Prime as I am speaking. So, uh, no spoilers in chat, but uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, why don't you just very non-spoilerly tell us how you're, uh, how you're liking the series so far. But yeah, let's go ahead and get everybody introduced, and then we'll get started proper. So, Saxy Guitar, what you got? Hey, I'm Saxy Guitar. I am playing Professor Clayman. Uh, just a little scientist from the Dakota areas that is now uh, exploring this part of the wasteland in the winter. All right, Professor X, what you got going on? Hello, I'm Professor X, no relation to Professor Clayman, and I am playing, as always, uh, the completely normal, completely human, uh, with normal skin color, um, Mr. Chapek and his uh, uh, erstwhile, no, that's not the right word, uh, constant companion, Big L.O., the uh, Mr. Handy Valet. And last but not least, Mukies. Hey, Muki is here playing rambunctious Catherine for four scenes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, really nothing else besides that. Uh, let's see where uh, her new intelligence takes her. And I'm surprised I have the same intelligence as Ren now, because for some reason I thought you were like an eight or something. But I'm, <laughs> I'm smart. You're just right there. <laughs> but my luck carries me over the edge. Okay. He, he, he gets that a lot. A lot of people think he's an eight, but he's not actually an eight. <laughs> Oh, I love it. But All right, well, let's run the intro and we'll get started. And welcome back. So, uh, I've talked it over with the players, and we are going to fast forward just a little bit from where we left off. So, to set the scene, the Wastelanders, this group of Wastelanders, is currently uh, following Old Man Murray's directions to find the hidden casino known as Mirage. Now, Mirage is supposedly some kind of a traveling casino, something that is pulled by a massive pack of Brahmin and quite literally is a mirage to many who see it. They look at it and go, how the hell is that thing moving? I must be seeing things. And part of the reason that you are headed to Mirage is because you are investigating what Old Man Murray said about the Church of Adam being involved and that it might be a good thing if there was a um, change in leadership in uh, Mirage as itself. So it's been about maybe about a day, day and a half. You all are in the middle of the Commonwealth. It actually hasn't snowed, thank God, for a little bit. So you're still just kind of trudging through packed snow. So it's it's not fresh powder. Um, but I did want to give you all just a little bit to role play before we got to Mirage. Because I think you still had to discuss your approach about how you were going to handle Mirage. And I think that's very important to handle. Yes. And I just want it, when we do head over, I just want to add this little visual of that scene from Monty Python where you're like running, where, where that one guy's like but not running, getting closer, not getting closer and the guards yeah. are just like, hmm, hmm. Then, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over and over for a little while until we But just, then, <laughs> yeah, you're right there. Yeah, yeah. right there. So if, we, if we're just going to be right there, how are we going to enter this building? Well, we have the old fashioned, um, 
approach that this trio has, which is that I approach as some kind of bizarre uh, interdimensional merchant and <laughs> we sh- schmooze our way into uh, uh-huh. the caravan. But if you want to try something different, I'm totally on board. That's our, just our usual shtick. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... Because I wonder if we were to try and, like, one of us sneaks in with, you know, weapons or something and caches it somewhere. I don't know if there's, like, a bunch of people there or Should we do not the enough old... to where we don't blend in as some random new person. Should we do the old uh, old Trojan horse or covered wagon gag where <laughs> one of you is underneath yeah, all the supplies? Yeah let's, just, yeah, let's just keep doing the Monty Python. Uh, I could probably stumble my way into into this place without causing okay. any trouble or hassle. Uh, it depends on what you stumble over. A bomb. I'm really good at just finding doors that are unlocked. Oh, well. Some would call that breaking and entering, but... Yeah, should I give you some of my weapons, then? Maybe something... The switchblade, something you can kind of hide. The other idea is... You guys, we, we look for an entrance on the outside. That looks like it goes into somewhere that's not being watched. I go in as just lucky guy who wants to try to make some money. And then I try to find okay. that door to let you guys in. Right. You're the you're the rube. You're the the guy who needs to go to the, the nickel slots and uh, yeah. just just get wasted on cheap margaritas. And yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Hopefully that door you find and stumble through isn't like some dungeon that makes its way through like some weird maze. Well, it is it is difficult to have a dungeon when your your that place of true. business constantly moves around. Yeah. They just so. find a manhole and set up right on top. Yeah. Hope I'm not giving you LH ideas here. Maybe that maybe that's the <laughs> secret. Maybe that's Mirage is perfectly tracked in their journey over open manholes. <laughs> <laughs> do we want I'm to go with quiet <laughs> do we want to go with that approach of me trying to find a way to get you guys in with weapons yes i think that's good yeah okay um i guess if when we're close enough who wants to try to look for the good a good entrance for us who has got good perception that's a great question something that's... my I'm perception so glad you asked. five I My know. perception is eight. Okay, so you, most likely. Well, don't See forget the it's perception survival, so survival. that might make the difference. Just My eight. survival is zero. Okay, we're eight and eight. Um, I'm 13. My survival's not tagged. Oh, okay. But I'm not no tagged. I guess you're not tagged either. No. Um, so it sounds I'm like maybe tagged. the professor wants to be the one looking from the outside while Chopek and Kate or Catherine go in. I don't know. Yes. It's your game. You tell me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so rambunctious Catherine, yeah. um, formerly known as the artist, formerly known as Raging Kate. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> post, post Kate. Yeah. She goes by a symbol now. Um, so she's going to be <laughs> the rube, right? Who wants to, ooh, nickel slots. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to figure out where I fit in in this picture. Wait, do you, um, you got the money. You're, you're, you the, talkative, the, money. you're yeah. the talkative one. Do you go in there and find the door for us? I mean, I can, but I don't think Chapek is very good at playing the, like, the rube. Like, yeah. I think please, we please do, fleece me. I think That's we should fair. just go in, like, maybe normal, you and I, and the the story is you've got all my money, and I want to ah, spend it. So, okay. So yeah. you're the rich one, and I'm just the money man. I'm the accountant, right? Okay. You're yeah. the person yeah. that makes sure she doesn't, yeah, waste the money on stupid right. things. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah, every rich person on, has that person. I'll put on my glowy, like, prismatic um, reflector coat so I look yes. extra fancy. Good, yes. So you yes. so you look like the, the embodiment of disco. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, that okay. and the pimp boy, you'd sell it. Yeah. Oh, oh. yeah, here we go. You would definitely look the part. Dude, you're gonna you're gonna look like you're gonna look like the Dazzler from X Men, circa 1997. There's a reference. Good lord, I haven't thought about the Dazzler, and I don't even know how long. Yeah. Oh lord. All right. So it sounds like we have a yeah. plan. So we're gonna okay. say that you stumble upon Mirage after a certain mm-hmm. amount of thematic time, and actually, when you see Mirage at first, you're thinking, "Oh, that must just be a mountain, or that must be." 
you know, some tall structure. And it is a tall structure, just you didn't expect Mirage to be that big. Uh, so when you do approach it, it is about a five or six story building that is designed like a beehive. So kind of has the um, larger bottom that then kind of tapers off towards the top. And currently it's not moving, but there is a very large ramp that comes down about midships uh, down to the ground. And you can see a few people from the wasteland just kind of stumbling in. Uh, you do see that there are two guards in armor. Uh, very, very nice looking armor. Um, it looks to be some form of metal armor, if that makes any difference to you. They also have combat rifles, though they're not pointing them at anybody, but they do have them slung. And they also have machetes uh, on their belt, if need be. But what you all notice is that as the people from the wasteland come up to the guards, they are padded down very thoroughly. Any weapons, any armor is taken from them unless it's used to, you know, shelter them from the cold. And then they are allowed inside. Um, the Brahmin that are usually pulling this casino, they are currently in a pack being tended to by another two guards. And other than that, what I'd like you to imagine is above where the ramp is coming down, there is in glowing, flashing, you know, standard Vegas neon lights, it says, Welcome to Mirage. Leave your troubles behind. Ooh. That's e awesome. Easier said than done. Mm -hmm. I got troubles a lot of coming troubles. in. Yeah. yeah. And, and, the, and her name is Rambunctious Catherine. Yes. Mm -hmm. Razzle Dazzle. So I guess I have all We're of We're going to workshop the... that. <laughs> I have all of the goods that they would potentially want to take from you. Uh, yeah, so okay. the thing is, I'm not sure, like, where you can hide this. You're, you're just going to assume that you can go in there and try to figure out a way to hide some of this stuff. Oh. Well, it's like, how much do you want to take? In, a, in the bathroom of an Italian restaurant, just in case. <laughs> That is a good point. <laughs> Once I get the stuff in, do we need to worry that we now have the stuff on me? Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Which is why the switchblade, at the very least, you can pass that off back, because that's concealed. Just has to get in separately. Can you... Do you have access to a fat suit? <laughs> uh, like, a, like an Eddie Murphy, <laughs> Nutty Professor-ass fat suit. Like, really, really excessive. No. Okay. All right. I thought I I'd got ask. The, the heavies. Did you make you a heavy know. set leather set? A heavy I, set. Uh, thank I you. Am, yes. Yeah. I, I'm wearing a heavy leather set over my lab coat. Yes, but but it's not heavy set. It's not no. a heavy yeah. set leather set. <laughs> no. Okay. It's not you a heavy set. Spend the luck to make it a heavy set leather set. <laughs> you got it now. Pockets. I spend the luck to make it deep pocket. Okay. In game term. So it doesn't look like it, but basically now my armor has the same idea as my backpack. Ah, uh, yes. Hammer space. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, right. we got to get a... The infinite yeah. fanny pack. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll have you look inside. Choppy hasn't looked inside yet, yes. And I never will. You don't no, want I'll to. I'll force you. Yeah, I'll force I just, you. You, don't, you don't want to. <laughs> no, no, I'll force you. Everything in there looks normal just, to me. Ah. <laughs> Check your contract. I don't think... I think you'll find you can. <laughs> Legally. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. What? Let's see. What? What should we give him? Um. Well, I yeah, would obviously just the switchblade. All Everything? your weapons. I would. I weapons would and armor. I would assume. Okay. I don't want to trade it all, so just assume. No. You know, we're, you we're just gonna go in. <laughs> yeah. And then the, my next question is: Is Bigelow coming with you or staying with the professor? Oh, he's got to come with. Oh, well, with... actually, that that does help if if we send Bigelow off with uh, Clayman, then he can act as a sort of floating chest, right? Because he has that internal panel, right? So you could stash True. some stuff in there as well, and just say, "Oh, well, he's my pack mule of sorts," you know? Mm -hmm. No, because pack mule would would mean that there is stuff inside of him. I would he's say he's my um, emotional he's my support science project. Robot. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Emotional yeah. support science project. Got it. Yes. The old ESSP. <laughs> okay. He's my heavy set science project. <laughs> <laughs> Brought it around circle. I love it. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, yeah, that, that sounds like a plan. We are, yeah. we have set our plan, in, so we are good to go in motion now, correct? Sounds yep. like it to me. Okay. I think so. Here we go. All right, well, rambunctious Catherine and Mr. Chopik, uh, tell me a little bit about how you're approaching the bottom of the ramp where the guards are waiting. I would like to just push my way to the front, kind of in a very, just, I'm, I got greater money pockets and purpose in a, here. Yeah. In a TikTok influencer sort of way. Yes, yes. And they have no idea who I am, like normal. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you I, push. I will trail behind. Trail behind, <laughs> all right. So you, you push your way to the front of the line. Some people are not happy with you, but uh, when you get up to the guards, they kind of look you up and down and they go, well, it doesn't seem that we're going to have an issue with the no caps, no entry policy. I think uh, based on what you're wearing, you must have a lot of caps. That is correct. Quite an astute uh, observation there. I've got my... Um this uh, dashing fellow behind me is Mr. Chopik, and he is holding all of my caps, everything valuable that you would love to see transferred to your fine establishment here. They look to Mr. Chopik. Um, Mr. Chopik will, he, he'll say, um, I, yes, I, I have all of the money on behalf of my client here. Oh, I love it. So they, they kind of look at each other, shrug, and go, all right, well, just a few rules. Uh, we also got to patch you down, but got to agree to the rules first. First rule, what happens at Mirage stays at Mirage. We kind of have an exclusive thing going here. We want to make sure that people feel safe doing, well, we want to make sure they can indulge in their vice, whatever that vice is, while they're at Mirage. Um, which leads me to point number two. Once you get inside... You're only allowed inside for 72 hours, and that's it. Once your 72 hours are up, you don't get to ever come back to Mirage ever again. Got to keep things exclusive. Point three, we've already covered. You've got the caps, obviously, so you're going to get entry. And then uh, uh, the whole point of the pat down is that uh, no violence inside. All weapons are checked, and if you cheat or you cause a scene, you're either going to get chucked out or uh, you'll pay in other means. Is that uh, amenable to you all? Of course, of course. Just uh, as I get pat down, hopefully you guys will buy me a drink first or are drinks free of charge here? They kind of look at one another. Uh, I think you'll have to talk to the bartender for that. You're looking for a uh, cantor once you get inside. Cantor. Okay. Well, if Mr. Tropic here, if you're ready, I think we can... Enter and start spending all my life savings away. Well, some of your life savings. All of my life savings. So, some of your... Uh, okay. <laughs> and we'll begin the... You know, I'll go up to the security pat downer. Yeah. And they're very respectful about it. They're not, like, groping or doing anything wrong. <laughs> they're just, Thank you know, God. making sure that you don't yeah. have, like, your super sledge on you. Or that you don't have a, a 9 millimeter pistol hidden somewhere. Um, but once they pat you down and they clear you, they step aside and say, welcome to Mirage. And remember, leave your troubles at the door. I'm just, yeah, I'm just taking in the spec, the whole spectacle. What, what is this grand interior like? Yeah. So once you come up the ramp and you crest the top and you see into the casino, it is actually a... It's almost like the, the atrium of the Hotel Bellagio, if you've ever been to Vegas, mm -hmm, or if you've mm -hmm. never been to Vegas, just imagine like a huge expanse where in the middle is a 360 uh, degree bar, so it's a complete circle around that you can come from any angle. Um, there are people already kind of clamoring for drinks and otherwise, you know, shouting at the bartender. Uh, off to the left side of the place, there are some blackjack tables, some poker tables. Off to the right, there are some slots. Uh, they look like they might be a little bit modified. You'd have to, you know, go over and inspect them to be sure. But they don't like look like, oh, it's just a lever and you pull. It looks like it's a little bit more involved. Um, there's also, towards the rear of the space, is a stage 
where a woman is currently singing as a Protectron is playing music to accompany her. And I'd like you to imagine kind of like um, Frank Sinatra or uh, what's that other uh, show that I can't remember the name of? Same vein as Sinatra. Oh, um, uh, Dean... um... Dean Winchester. No, that's not right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm Googling Dino. too because it's going to bother me. Dean it's Martin. The... I think I think Caspian's Dean got Martin. Dean Martin's. Martin. Dean Martin. Oh, Dean I should have said yeah. it. Yeah, dang. It's yeah. the uh, the the Rat Pack, right? Uh, Sammy Davis Jr. and all those guys. Mm-hmm. So just yeah. imagine that kind of ambience uh, coming from a female singer. Singer. I can say words today. And yeah, the casino is your oyster. Gross. <laughs> well, Miss Tropic, what what should we do here? Should we should we go exchange? Do we have to exchange to, for poker chips or something? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm actually going to give it to you for free. What happens is if you look at the slot machines or any of the tables, the poker tables and the blackjack tables, what you see is that there is kind of this little box that's attached to each of the the tables and the machines where you see people putting caps into the machine and then credits are displayed on the machine or at the table. Okay, so it's just at each, almost like like an arcade or something. Something similar, yes. Now, if you actually want to cash out, you also, I'll give this to you for free, you do see some people coming away from the tables with these little slips of punch cards, basically, that they then take to the bar and then get a payout there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess we should probably play a little bit first before we immediately look for our little yeah. pals there. <laughs> Establish our, um, our, our, our cover story here a little bit more. Yes. Who yes. knows? Maybe I'll stumble my way in there as well. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. So You'll I just... gotta ask, what uh, what game are you playing? Uh, uh okay. Blackjack. Um, I got Too rules easy. for it. Baccarat. Don't yes. know Baccarat, unfortunately. Horse, uh, horse racing, the giddy up buttercups. Uh, uh, uh cornhole. Cornhole. <laughs> cornhulio, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, honestly, I have rules for poker. I have rules for blackjack. I have rules for the slots. If you want to go for another game, I can make them up on the spot. But it's really <laughs> just... Oh, I, 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 I had thought of uh, Chemin de Fer. Uh, you know, do you know that one? I do not I, know. I Sounds only, made up. I only know it from the Super Ego Bond sketch. Where they play Chemin de Fer and eat cucumber sandwiches. It's just... <laughs> Go go listen to that. It's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Um, yeah, let's do let's do blackjack. That's easy enough, right? Yeah. All right. So when you uh, first sit down at the table, um, you are kind of looked over by one of the dealers. Uh, he does look to be. How do I want to say this? He's not Arnold levels of bulk, but he is very well muscled and very well toned. He's just not bodybuilder level. Mm. Um. And he also has a bald head, and I'm going to give him an eye patch because I think it's cool. Is this the um, hitman? I mean, maybe. <laughs> He's Agent um, 47? Yeah. Maybe. Double you bargain. know what? Agent 47 is a good, a good reference, I think. So just imagine 47 with, uh, with an eye patch. Um, but when, he sit, when you sit down at his table, uh, he finishes dealing the hand, and then he turns his attention to you and goes... Welcome to the Mirage Casino. You must be new here. Uh, I will require that you deposit some caps before I can deal you any cards. Mr. Tropic, may I please have uh, my first... uh, You see, like, gears kind of turning in Kate's head. Gears that were rusty and never turned before. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) She's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Aren't I supposed to have some dividends by now? On my investments. Um, Mr. Chapik will kind of like blink a few times and then say, um, uh, yes, Miss Catherine, according to your portfolio, 
you have many dividends that we shall pay out for you to enjoy the casino plays. Yes, I, I would like to use my, my dividends so we don't go into my actual invested money so far. Very well. Your, <laughs> your command is my oyster. I just imagine your face is kind of pained by, like, this increased uh, yeah. intelligence. Yeah, 100%. 1,000%. <laughs> <laughs> is this Mr. Chopek's French Canadian accent? I don't know. It could be at this point. <laughs> yeah, this is I, this is this is me doing Chopek's voice, doing another voice. It's yeah. no, it's actually a show of skill. It's it's yeah. one of those things where fun fact: if you ever go back and listen to Bugs Bunny doing Daffy Duck or Daffy Duck doing Bugs Bunny, it's not just an impersonation. It's the character doing it. It's a whole thing in voice acting. It's I, I won't so. It's so next level hard stuff. It's it, the people who can do it really well are exceptional. Yeah. Now, uh, real quick, uh, I do have a question for you. So you can bet up to a hundred caps on each hand, and Blackjack, the literal Blackjack dealer, that's his name. I'm not shitting you. That's what his name is in the module. His name is Blackjack. It's literally Blackjack. Yeah. Not not even joking with you. <laughs> um, Got it. Okay. <laughs> The house will pay out two to one. So if you bet 100, you'll get 200. If you bet 50, you'll get 100, et cetera, et cetera. Um, to give you an idea of what the rules are, if you're not cheating, it is an intelligence and a barter. And if you have, uh, it's one of those things where if you are cheating, it's a perception and a sneak at difficulty of three. The int and barter, you just want to get more successes than I get. Okay. Am I... Is it, is it conceivable that, that I can help Catherine in any way? Like, if you tell me how. Okay. Well, what do you want to do first, Catherine? Because you're, you're, you're driving here. Hmm. Maybe I don't want to cheat immediately. Or maybe I do. So every time I play, they don't think I'm cheating. Hmm first impressions here see because my I, I i do have sneak tagged both of them are nine though so but difficulty three got the ap mm -hmm. can also give me ap That's give you more mm -hmm. no no you shut your mouth <laughs> you shut your mouth when you're talking to me <laughs> oh where's this coming from cat this is i don't like this catherine go back to kate <laughs> now for another four scenes, baby. Oh God! <laughs> well, Unless I do me. a detox what's, of sorts. What's, um, uh, what's the angle? <sighs> let's uh, let me try and uh, let's try a cheat here. Let's try okay. a cheat. Sure, why not? Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. it is a perception and a sneak at a difficulty of three. If you win, you win automatically. But what is your bet before we go any further? All in. So 100, 100. caps. All right. Yeah, and I want to spend AP. So I want to, I want to, I do want to give you some. So I have some extra, um, not just the one, but. Um, okay, so if I remember the rules correctly, it would be your one AP, and then it would give me two AP if I remember correctly. I believe so. Yes. Okay, so I will be rolling perception, sneak. That's four dice. Bet Mr. Dice. Chopic. I don't know if Chopic would appreciate that. <laughs> I'm sorry? Oh, chat was just saying that they sh that K Catherine should have bet Chopic. No, actually. No, that's a bad idea. The, the bad, you got bad my thing money. That, yeah. That's yeah. a bad thing that you typed. Think about that. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay. I only see two successes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have your luck back because this is a new quest. You can't. And I have here. my extra luck from the the fancy coat here. I have. Let me just double check how much it gives me. Plus two, so I have five. I'm gonna spend a luck point to see what happens here. All right. All right. Uh, so can I spend another luck point? You can, can I assist? Oh, yes. Can you assist? Oh, yes. Yeah. Also, if you tell me how you're assisting. Yes. Um, I think what I'd like to do is, as this this um, subordinate Chopic 
character, whoever this is. Uh, uh, um, yeah, let's come up with the name. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah. So I, what I'd like to do is I'd like to like make a visible show of like, well, I, I guess I better get Catherine's wealth out because they're gonna have to pay for this and like bags and bags of like caps and you know. <laughs> Like to try to distract the other players and maybe even the dealer. Like, oh shit! Like, there's actual caps like <laughs> right in front of me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, I think you're. Let me see what what even role would that be? Why don't we do? No, let me actually look at your sheet because I want you to have a fair chance at this. Let me take a look at your sheet. Uh, give me a. Let's call it an agility. I think an agility in a speech would make sense here because you're speaking with your movements. Mm-hmm. Agility. Okay. Let me set this to six then. And then four for the speech. Tagged. Uh, okay. And I'm rolling one die. Here we go. Yep. One die. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> so I think what's going to happen is you both try to cheat. <laughs> oh, and no. Blackjack does catch you. And he very quickly pulls your cards away. And uh, he kind of leans in and says, look, uh, I'm going to give it to you, this one for free. But the rules are very stringent about cheaters here. It, it, we have kind of had a, a need for cheaters, if you get my meaning. So don't don't do it again or I can't help you. I don't know what you're talking about. And I kind of give him a little wink. Double down, triple down. Also, make sure to minus a hundred caps because I already did. Damn. You're doing so well, Catherine. (laughs) Good thing it's my dividends. Yes, good thing. (laughs) All right, should we try again? (laughs) Maybe I do a normal, normal one here. A regular bet, you mean? Yeah, yeah, a regular bet, perhaps. So how many caps? All in. Another hundred? Oh, that's the opposite of what you just said. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like another hundred to me. Okay, <laughs> sure, why not? All right, and again, you have the yeah, same so... option. It's either in barter versus me or perception sneak at a difficulty of three. <laughs> Let's do the normal um, non-cheatery. So that was int and barter. Mm-hmm. Barter. Oh, for some reason I thought it was int something else. Oh, jeez. Um. Well, okay, let's try this. Um. Here we go. To lose I really hope, some more money. I really hope Clayman can do literally anything. Oh no! Look at that. Got Kate's two. got two. That's good. All right, so if I read these rules correctly, uh, I am rolling 2d20, and anything 11 or lower is a success. All right, let's expand out that 28 and see what I've rolled. I've rolled an 11 and a 17, meaning that I've only rolled one success, meaning you Ah. do get back 200 caps, so you've broke even. Break even. However... I like to stop where I uh, uh, I, am now ahead. Yeah. Here's the here's where the, the thing drops. So you hit it big, and everybody else at the table throws down their cards and throws a fit. But uh, coming over to the table is the bartender. And you see that he's wearing a little name tag on, like, his valet outfit that just says Cantor. Brown Jim. Head. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, it's Cantor, and it's head of, se- or head of security, head engineer. And he's got, like, two other titles. So it's, cause it's, a, it's a very long name tag. It's a um, very vertical name tag. Yeah, <laughs> like a military kind of like. Oh, oh like the, the bars, bars. Yeah. Yeah. bars. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Cantor comes over. Uh, he looks to be kind of a middle-aged nerd, all things considered. Kind of one of those like. Ha, uh, I don't know what those look like. <laughs> yeah, what do those look like? Who knows what those look like? Um, but <laughs> he comes over and he is secu- uh, secured, escorted by two of the security guards. Not the same ones at the entrance, but two different ones. And he kind of just says, Hello, folks. Um, I understand someone just hit it big. Oh, yes. I I, I hit it quite big. I am at uh, zero net gain. So uh, 
you know, it, it's doing. I'm doing good, honestly. All the, things considered. For the post-apocalypse, that's pretty good. Actually. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Is there uh, some sort of free complimentary uh, libation on the menu here? No, you would have to spend caps. However, I am curious, uh, Mr. Blackjack, uh, are these the ones? And the way he says that is weird. Like, you can tell that this is some, like, secret code word, but he's not hiding it very well. He and, waggles his uh, eyebrows as he says it. Are these the right, yeah, he's, like, raising his <laughs> eyebrows. Um, and Blackjack is, in a moment, going to look at you two. So you have a chance to say something with your body language before Blackjack answers. And then you got to tell me what that body language is. No. Uh, hmm. Some sign language, maybe. Maybe these are some last son of Adam people. I'm not sure what's going on here. What do you, what do you think? trying to think uh, i i am trying to commit to this i'm not in charge and i don't know what's happening shtick so and i'm looking I, at you like super like what do you think i'm gonna try to stay perfectly still and not look at you and just sort of you know just, <laughs> the, just the the deer approach yes the uh the the i don't get paid enough for this subordinate approach mm. or at all frankly <laughs> So I, I will attempt, which is in itself a choice, to do nothing, right? Mm -hmm. To be as neutral as possible. I'm sure that that will work out fine. Okay, um, so that's what Chopek's doing. Kate, uh, what I don't know you what you're doing? talking about. Chopek is incredibly expressive. He really is. Um, I'll try to do, like, I don't know if there's a way I could try to recall some sign language we saw. I, but that was to command those big old centipedes. I mean, sign language is sign language. Yeah, also, I'll, I'll try to do Have that. we had enough time past where I would have taught you sign language? Maybe a little bit. Maybe a few On the things. journeys? Yeah, okay. what's the... What's the... That's a dog. dog here. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. You just know dog. <laughs> sure. So so these so these guys so so uh, Cantor and his goons <laughs> approach the blackjack table and your first instinct is to be like oh yeah uh huh mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. totally subtle yeah hmm yeah I'm like I'm wiping sweat off my <laughs> oh yeah that'll do it yeah because because normal people wipe away sweat with this like, complicated gesture yeah. Oh Gotta make Lord. sure I get all the corners, the crevasses. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna accidentally flag like, uh, <laughs> you know, some kind of gang that's inside. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? All right. The, um, the, I'm just, the Neo I'm, Bloods. Oh God. I'm gonna roll a challenge or a combat die here. If I roll an effect, they'll buy it. I've rolled an effect. Yeah. So Blackjack actually gives you a very subtle nod. And then to uh, Cantor, he says, uh, no, not not these ones, but those gentlemen over there. And he points at to the left of the table. So you guys are table right. He points to gentlemen on table left. And Cantor smiles. And then he very loudly declares, well, as everybody here knows, in order to get into Mirage, you have to agree to a very certain set of rules. And that includes that cheaters must pay. You and you, pointing at the security guards, take those gentlemen below. And uh, the gentlemen start, you know, trying to back away. <laughs> um, the guards very quickly corral them, and they are escorted away to parts unknown. And Good then job Cantor inadvertently murdering those people. It could be. Uh, but heathens, Cantor, anyways. for his part, is going to kind of uh, cough into his hand and goes. My apologies for that. Uh, do let me know if any other cheaters do happen by your table, Blackjack. And Blackjack doesn't grimace, but he definitely grunts and nods, and then Cantor wanders back to the bar. Hmm. Meanwhile, uh, yeah. what is Professor Clayman doing outside? Real quick, I kind of want to, where yes. did they, I want to take note of where they were led, even if you don't tell me, just that I've taken note okay. of the direction I'll, they've I'll gone. make a note that you noted. Okay. <laughs> the best notes are notes about notes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, ne nested uh, ontological notes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, Bigelow. Uh, how long do you think it would be? Well, I mean, uh, you got to give the boss some credit. I mean, he just walked into a big establishment. I, I expect that by the end of two hours from now, he's going to own the entire thing. Okay, so you think in two hours before they open a door? Oh, no, Perhaps? I thought you were just implying that we own this place. Oh, oh, okay, okay. How long do you think before they find an entrance for us? Do you want the honest answer, or do you want <laughs> the answer I'm supposed to give you as per my contract? Let's say you have no contract for a second, and you give me the honest answer. Just a thought like exercise. Hype, yeah, the AI, hypothetical. Uh, yes. Uh, work around. Well, I must say that uh, such a proposal would be against my programming and against my contract, but since we're speaking hypothetically... Exactly. I think hypothetically that uh, we should probably get looking for that hatch because our chances aren't good. Perfect. Uh, before you do, uh, do you mind if I uh, just open up that uh, pack area you got for storage and take a quick look, see what see what I'm working with? Yes, but if you remove something that belongs to the boss, I'm going to have to take it out of your pay. I'm a dealer for you guys. I'm not part of your pay. He says nothing. He whirs. <laughs> I open up <laughs> somewhere <and> deep within. <laughs> I open, I open up and see what's inside. See how much room I'm messing with. So that's a question for Hex. Hex, I know you've got the. No, you took out the dud mini nuke. That's right. Yeah, that's that's what I was just thinking. Is that I did remove the dud mini nuke to use as a, a peace offering for mm -hmm. the the sewer dwellers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So so that's gone. Um, and then the other interior stuff is um, just like assorted bric-a-brac that like could be pawned off on people as like limited time special offer they only manufactured one you know oh, yeah. yeah yeah to be, to be exactly sold you're talking about <laughs> yeah and then of course the interior like you know there's flavor fuel in there there's like okay. you know odds and ends the stuff you'd expect a robot to have inside of it yes yeah. okay it's um, chassis yeah i'm gonna look for a control board I'm sure there's one in there. Yeah, there's there's a control board. What what are you trying to do with the control board? <laughs> Nothing. Just take a note. Thank you. Okay. Um. Well. Okay. So let's let's. I guess I, I now close them back up. And say, hey, thank you. Um. I might need to hide some goods in there, but I think, I guess we'll have you do an another honest answer. Can you tell that I'm hiding things in my backpacks and my armor pockets? And the eye stock, or at least one of the eye stocks of the handy of Bigelow, just kind of visibly moves up and down your body. And Bigelow says, I can tell that you haven't paid taxes in over 10 years, which I must say is a quite a awesome feat that you have managed to acquire. Yeah, there's, I don't have a government to pay taxes, too. Okay, cool. But do you notice that I have weapons on me? You're a little bloated, but <laughs> you say I'm oh, heavy, heavy set. Yeah, you're, you're looking right, a you little heavy set. A little heavy set. Again, Bigelow, eye up and down. Uh, aside from the fact that you're reading a bit more hot than usual, uh, no, I, I, I don't detect anything. Perfect. Okay. Just in case we get caught, I wanted to make sure we could play it off that I don't have anything good on me. Thank you. Uh, so I'm thinking since this is a big moving. Uh, building that it probably has a decent size exhaust to push all the heat out or bring cooling in. That's probably under the bottom. Do you say we just try to go in that way? I mean, you're the boss as much as it pains me to say that because Chopek is my boss for all perpetuity. Yeah, I'm not your boss. I'm j we're whatever. We'll worry about that. We're about, we're about actual terms later. He's your, he's your, you're his current supervisor. There you go. <laughs> okay. Pro, pro, provisional supervisor. There okay. you go. Um. And yeah. I am going to try to stumble my way the back and try to get under it to find an exhaust entrance that okay. I'm going to spend a luck point and say there is an exhaust entrance there that's big enough for us to go through. All right, so, yes, the thermal exhaust point, the traditional weak point. Um, hey, at least they put it on the bottom, so I can't, like, easily get a bomb in there. 
Well, here's the thing. So, again, the Mirage Casino is structured like a beehive, but there is kind of this track that provides some lift to the building itself. And when you do roll underneath or duck underneath, however you'd like to imagine yourself getting underneath the casino, um, there's actually enough room for Bigelow to float in underneath as well. So it's not just like a, you have to crawl through the mud or anything. Um, it's a good thing that this casino isn't moving, though, because the wheels are very large, very metal. They'd squish you in an instant. Um, but since you spent the luck, there is indeed a exhaust port uh, that has a metal grating across of it. Now, the metal grating is secured by what looks to be a few screws. So maybe you could get it that way. Okay. I would like yeah. to... Mads Mickelson put that in when he designed uh, Mirage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will like to try to undo this grating uh, smartly, not by brute force. Okay. Uh, and if you I'm ask me need... how, my multi-tool. Right. I'm going to need you to give me a... Let's call this an intelligence. And a sneak. Ooh, a sneak. Okay. I was considering lockpick, but I think a sneak is more applicable here. I was okay. thinking sneak or repair, so yeah, that makes sense. Now keep in mind, the exhaust port is only two meters wide. So... Mm -hmm. I did... S yeah, I think... I have think you, he said I could fit. Have you spent time practicing on uh, Womp Rats? Because then, <laughs> that I mean, that's ideal, right? Yeah. Oh, I, uh, what was my difficulty? I was just waiting for an opportune moment. Uh, difficulty of one. Hey. Oh, that's not so bad. It's almost as if, like, the ghost of your mentor is helping you. <laughs> the ghost of my mentor. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, whoever that is. Whoever that is. Brother <laughs> Hugh has come back and says, Use the force, Professor. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we have not established that concept as of yet. <laughs> uh, there's, there's some things in early Fallout. There Use is the... psychokinetics in early Fallout. You make a good point. Use the luck points. <laughs> cool. All right, two successes, meaning you get an AP back for your trouble. Yeah, uh, you open it up, and you actually manage to do it so that as it swings open on a hinge, you catch it before it makes, like, a squeaky noise or a, uh, or a kind of a grating metal sound. And, mm -hmm. yeah, you can climb up into the exhaust port, and Bigelow can follow you. Um, I will, I guess, take, take in the environment is... I would assume for easy cleaning, there wouldn't be a too far away way to look in or to this exhaust for cleaning and for repair purposes. How far away would something like that be for me? Like a like a Jeffrey's tube? Yeah. So sorry, but sorry to cross franchises. Right. Yeah, I'm trying not to do that. It's actually very hard. Um. So I'd like to imagine the exhaust port, you have to clamber up about another two meters, and then there's a sharp 90-degree turn. Okay. And you're greeted with a stretch of piping that leads to another grate. And when you look out past that grate, uh, what you see must be a engine room of some kind. Or if it is an engine room... It's not a traditional one. What I mean by that is that there are rows upon rows upon rows of exercise bikes. Oh my and, god! Is that, what? I, I know what's going to happen here. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, and chained, exercise class. <laughs> and chained to these exercise bikes are dozens upon dozens of captives, prisoners, cheaters, whatever you want to call them. That's um, cool. But they are pedaling away um, every once in a while. You do note that these robed figures are going uh, among the pedaling prisoners and washing the sweat from the prisoner's head and gently whispering to them. Give me a perception and a survival here to see if perception you notice something. Difficulty of one. That is a, sweet nothings. That is a nine. Do I spend the luck point to make it a 13? He's uh, only difficulty of one. Yeah, save it, save it. We might need to, might need to make some money back. Yeah, here's just, my. Just in case Catherine does literally any more gambling, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna need it. 
<laughs> Here's my two cents, though. If I'm going to spend the luck point to re-roll, wouldn't it be oh. better to spend the re luck point to... Now we're out two cents. What part of gambling do you not get? We need to reserve credit. Now we're at a <laughs> negative. We weren't even. We went yeah, break we're even. even. Now we're at negative yeah. two. <laughs> you know what? Fine. You, you, I guess you're right. I'll just do... I'll, I'll do this survival <laughs> and perception check. I believe... See, you're fine. You got two sevens. Lucky sevens. That's very lucky. Yeah, so Ooh, you actually get another snake eight. Eyes. Two eights and two sevens. Wow. Yeah. Uh, one in 400. It's a minuscule number. Um, but what matters is, Professor, you note that these robed individuals that are, quote unquote, tending to the prisoners, they all have symbology of the Church of Adam even more specific since you succeeded so well the last son of adam symbol okay oh dropping in here might be a bad idea and wanna... since this is a living world believe it or not you do hear a commotion as two semi well-dressed men are brought down into this space and they are thrown onto an exercise bike, chained down, and then told to pedal by two security guards. And if they don't start pedaling, they are pointed out with a combat rifle until they decide, yeah, I should pedal and not get shot in the face. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Uh, I don't want to make too much noise in this loud metal ducting. Um... I probably don't want to drop in here, though. Uh, I guess I'll just look ahead. How Does this keep going? Where, what am I looking at? So the piping seems to run the length and width of the room, so kind of just perimeter side of the room. So length, width, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, and there are regular metal gratings, so you don't have to come out of the initial one. You can come out of another one somewhere else in the room. Um, the only other thing I forgot to tell you is that this place smells terrible. Like, mm. imagine the worst locker room of your life and make it, like, three or four weeks old sweat, making it even worse. Yeah, mm. the old, old men's balls soup. Yep. <laughs> and boy, have they been stewing. <laughs> Makes Swampy. sense. Um... But I... Uh, thematically... Yes. We're going to go back to the other group because they could end up down here. So who knows? True, true. So back with Chopek and uh, Rambunctious Catherine. So those two guys were just escorted away. Blackjack is looking at, two, at you two going, are you dealing another hand? Mm, I think perhaps we should go uh, sample the, the fine, um, you know, you said there was someone singing. Yes, yes, there, uh, there is someone singing, and when you actually point at the stage, uh, Blackjack kind of actually looks wistfully and says, Ah, yes, of course, of course. Uh, Fusion Susan is uh, quite the good vocalist, isn't she? I always liked her voice. Yeah, she sounds fantastic. I would like to cash out, and I, you know, I want to get a little ticket with zero caps on it. Yeah, he literally just hands you, like, your caps back and says... No need to convert. You you broke even. Can I get my ticket, please? Oh, I guess if you want a souvenir, sure. He hands you a ticket. Nice. Now I'll add it to my little collection of lore here. Love it. And, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Tropic, I think uh, you've been sweating bullets too much. I'll give you a reprieve here, and we can, uh, you know, enjoy the sights and enjoy the sounds. <laughs> Please, Mrs. Catherine, I asked you not to mention my sweat condition uh, in public <laughs> any further. It does make me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> uncomfortable? The, the table? Under the table? Okay, now you are making fun of my speech impediment, and that is... <laughs> I, but, but, but I don't, I'm not sure why I continue to work for you. <laughs> I jest, I jest. Uh, please, follow me in. You know, we make our way down and, you know, well, as you our, step our away with Chopek, <laughs> with Chopek behind you, Blackjack actually quickly snags Chopek and goes, listen, if, if you need a new line of work, we, we could always use another hand here. 
I will strongly consider it. Thank you, Mr. Jack. All right, and then, sorry, Kate, you were saying? Oh, no, we just make our way over and uh, perhaps, I just said, perhaps our arms are linked as we, it looks fancier that way. You you grab my arm and yes, I and I have no choice. <laughs> yeah, it's my way to like take you away from the offer. Yeah, physically, metaphorically, yeah, it's all there. Everything, yeah. All right. And with that, we're gonna go to a five to ten minute break. We'll be back shortly, everybody. Stick around. And welcome back to part two of session 15 of Fallout Frozen Atom, where apparently the secret of Mirage is that uh, the children of Adam are making people exercise, which might be the most horrific thing ever, ever made in a Fallout setting. Sure. Um, but where we last left off was Chopek and Kate, Catherine. I got to remember Catherine. These for four more scenes. Uh, mm -hmm. Catherine and Chopek, you are checking out Fusion Susan's performance. And I'm not going to sing for you. I will say, though, oh, if, uh, keep you trying. Have, if you have the kind of GM that actually knows how to sing and doesn't blow out eardrums or make them bleed, uh, there actually are lyrics uh, for oh. Fusion Susan's performance. Like, they actually went to the trouble of making wow. lyrics for her. Surely. Can you throw them up? I kind of want to see. Yeah, Hold sure. I can. Let me take a <laughs> screenshot real quick. Surely you have access to a Vocaloid or something. Just get her to do it. Well, the thing about Vocaloid <laughs> is it's meant to be, at least most of them are meant to be for Japanese, and you can well, just do translate it into Japanese. Them. It's not a problem. Well, yeah, yeah, let me just whip out my English to Japanese dictionary and get yeah, five yeah. years of translation experience. And yeah, you, yeah, <laughs> you, <Google>. Baka. <laughs> Baka. I put it in, uh, put it in Discord for you all to take a look at. But yeah, there, there's legit lyrics to this thing. Gaijins. Okay. Wow. But it very much is a uh, Frank Sinatra kind of performance. So. Yeah, like a lounge singer, rat mm -hmm. pack kind of yep. vibe. Yep. But, I, let me just read here for the, for the listeners, yeah, go for I guess. It. Uh, I don't think I can sing it, but um, it says, Glowing for you is easy living. It's easy to glow when you know there's nothing in this wasteland but you. I never regret the years I'm giving. It's easy to give when you're in love. I'm happy to do whatever I do for you. Maybe I'm a fool. It's almost cruel, for I believe you're the Adam to my Eve. Glowing for you is easy living. It's easy to glow when you're in love. I'm atomically glowing for you. And you may have one uh, one AP for that. Why not? Yes. <laughs> Put that in there. Yes. Been marked. Yeah. Get it? Uh, it's, it's the post-apocalypse. Do you get it? Yeah, I yeah. I do. I do. It's yeah. funny. It's funny. Hee ha ha. But uh, she finishes her song, and there's applause from everybody who's watching her, and she takes a bow. And uh, she actually departs the stage down into the sort of table area before the stage, and is just mingling, just chatting with people. Knowing fans, that's a bad idea. Well, they seem to be very respectful. They're n they're not doing weird things, so maybe maybe things are different in the Fallout universe where it's Must not be. the... Where it's not the oh look you're you're a performer I should mob you and desperately try to get you to fall in love right. with me yes please please and please support my parasocial <laughs> it, relationship yeah it could be the <laughs> fact that you only get to see her for seventy two hours then after that you never see her again you don't get you don't not, believe in you don't have a long enough sight. connection I would think that would make it worse that would then so? like yeah. it would be it would yeah. be like a, a parasocial speed run <laughs> you know gonna add that to my lexicon parasocial speed run yeah you're welcome uh yeah oh but i guess my question is do you approach her to mingle i don't i do i go okay. up uh beautiful vocal cords you have there uh the creepiest way you could have phrased that <laughs> i'm fancy uh, yeah, Kate. Kate. She knows fancy words, but not how to use how them to use them. Really, yeah. Context. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, love it. So interestingly, um, up on the stage, you would have thought, oh, she's just a pretty face with a good voice, but her voice is completely different when she speaks to you. It's almost maybe same sort of refined air that Catherine has going on right now. Ooh. And I was, uh, I was really if, expecting Harvey Firestein. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Um, <laughs> But when she speaks, it is definitely with an educated tone. And 
She definitely sounds intelligent as she says, Ah, then you definitely enjoyed my performance. Well, I must say it is quite a pleasure to meet your acquaintance. Uh, my name is Fusion Susan. Uh, what is your name? I am Rambunctious Catherine. And this is my uh, accountant here, Mr. Chopic. He's very pleased to be here and to meet your acquaintance. Ah, I am in no way put out. No. Ah. One of those bits of help, I completely understand. But yes. I must say, I ask this of everyone who comes here and says hello to me. Have you perhaps seen The Last Son of Adam recently? No, I, I don't believe I have. Is, is he here? No, unfortunately, he's been gone from this place for many, many moons. And, well, I, if I might be honest with you, uh, I hope that I get to see more of him in the future. Oh, uh, you're, you're a huge uh, fan of his? Well, that is one word you could use, yes. Okay, you, you're... Is it uh, one of your, uh, you know, potential romance partners? Oh, it is not just a romance. It is something far more passionate and fiery. Oh, but do, do explain. What's, uh, what do explain. you see in him? What do, you, what do you see in him? What do you see in him? There's, there's a bad conversation that you're having that with bad ends. Oh, I'm just deciding as the GM how I should handle this. part this. of the stream will be censored. Yeah. Um, it's one long beep. That'd be a perfect time to cut away to someone yeah, else. Yeah, that sounds like the perfect time to cut away back to no, the professor. Yeah, pull, pull no. a ripcord. No, no I, will, I will repeat back everything she said. Into the record. Just yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. You guys well, while, there for hours. Yeah. While that's happening above you, <laughs> what are you doing, Professor? Again, you're still in the pipe that overlooks the exercise room. Oh, I feel like I need to, because there's guards in, in this room. So I feel like I need to continue along my path. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's like a, ventilation shaft. So like, yes, yeah, surely it'll pop out in like, a, a bathroom. That is the idea. Yeah, ambush yeah, somebody in a stall or something. You know. Yeah. Yeah. This is a GoldenEye 007 reference. You can, well, I guess they did just remaster it, so maybe some young people would know that reference. That's what I. Yeah, I'm hoping that someone will Google it and then maybe be like, "Oh, that's yeah. what people looked like in the '90s. They were all block, blocky. Yeah, and they had yeah. chop heads. The hitboxes were. You know, yeah, blocky. and also laser watches, which were the most infuriating things known to man. There is, if we want a more recent reference, there is a mission in Starfield where you are going through the vents through a uh, Vegas-style environment. Oh, I must have missed that because I wasn't able to land on the planet because of the arbitrary bounty system. Huh, weird. Yes, yes, <laughs> that, is, that is definitely a problem. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's too bad. Can't see that. Hmm. Yeah, if only. <laughs> But yeah, uh, Professor, I have good news and bad news. Which would you like first? It, they're the same thing, so <laughs> go ahead. Okay, you've learned from Hex. I see what's happening now. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you do find that eventually, yes, the air duct does lead to a bathroom. The problem is that the bathroom is connected to a cage of prisoners. And there's like 15 or 20 of the poor souls stuffed in there. So it smells even worse. Oh. <laughs> you sound pleased. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see where the good is in this. It's just the same thing. Wow. Yeah, Hex, yeah. thank you so much for teaching me. This. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> um, You're making progress, I guess. It's the good news. I good. Probably doesn't go too much further. So I guess this is my option. One of many. Again, there are other grates that lead out into the greater exercise room, but you would have to take care of not only the guards, but the chained up prisoners and the children of Adam walking mm -hmm. among them. I don't think I can do that alone. Which actually raises a good question. What did you tell Bigelow to do? Or is Bigelow just this entire time floating behind you? I assume Bigelow would probably make less noise than I do. So if How he does... felt like... He doesn't fit in the the exhaust port. Surely, there's there's two, like he's he's huge. No, if he shrinks, if he pulls in his arms very carefully and Ooh. he brings in his eye stalks, he could fit in there. 
Alright, okay. He's probably smaller than me once you bring it all in. Well, I mean, you're heavy set, so that mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but have you, like, you? I've seen you play Fallout 4. The actual box that Mr. Gusty's come in. I guess so, big. yeah, it is yeah. actually kind of, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to assemble them. They're they're put together. Well, they could put together oh, themselves, so, right? So like it's, not a, it's not an Ikea Mr. Handy. No, no. Note to self, make rules for Ikea variant handy. Got it. Put I some... would love that as a wild wasteland, just me M stumbling upon an Ikea Mr. Handy. Me Meister Handy Koenig or whatever. It's yeah, just a bunch of big. umlauts over the, the vowels. Well, if, if Bigelow felt like he could follow me without causing a scene, he would definitely be with me. He's been there the entire time. Perfect. Uh, I'm just going to. In fact, turn. in a whispery voice, he says, Hey, uh, hey, boss, or temporary supervisor, whatever, I'm going to have to start calling you. What are we doing? I think we probably need to keep going forward unless you and me want to solo the entire compound. I don't think that's a very good idea. See, we're on the same page. I keep going forward. <laughs> Go okay. look at my next vent option. All right, your next vent. Uh, roll me a combat die. Ooh. This is fun. Uh, just one. Just one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did it show up? Uh, I oh, don't. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay, a two. Let me consult my handy dandy chart. Interesting. So the pipe does another ninety degree turn this way to go Ooh. back up to vertical. But mm -hmm. there is a hatch, which if you very carefully push open and peer out of, you see the backside of a bar. Interesting. So my choices are in very public view. <laughs> and two places heavily guarded. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, you have all the weapons, so you're best equipped for this yeah. whole situation. And the luck. That's true. Honestly, I mean, honestly, the bar sounds the best. The, and I look like an engineer. I'm still yeah, in my lab coat. Yeah, you're yeah, doing just, the plumbing or whatever. Yeah. yeah. You know how people in lab coats work on plumbing? Yeah, exactly. When it's, it's a, a case moving of, city, yes. You know, you get splashed. You're in the splash zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got your coat mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. yeah, cover it. Famously resistant to like human feces, the lab mm -hmm. coat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's how that works, I think. And yeah. to make your life even more miserable, I'm going to spend two AP that you hear the sounds of feet coming your way and you have to like duck back down and I'll let you say that you keep the grating open or the hatch open just enough that you can hear. You uh, you hear what the other two know is Cantor, but Cantor says, uh, man, uh, I hope that's going to get us enough through the night. Otherwise, we're going to have to start finding more cheaters. Uh, oh, hello, miss. Uh, what can I get you for your drink? Well, what's your poison? And you hear this classic clinking of glasses and standard bartending things. Um, I am going. Uh, this sounds like the funniest entrance. So I think. Because this probably won't go too much further. Mm -hmm. I can probably see that at least unless I want to be smaller, I can't go through much more. Thanks. OK, so I. I'm going to try to exit this one. Mm -hmm. And I will try to be. Uh, I, I argue that I can't be stealthy because this is very open, but I'm going to mm -hmm. try to like look like I'm there on purpose. So I mean, you are. I'm going to have you do an agility and a sneak. Mm hmm. If you succeed at a difficulty of three, I will say that Cantor does not notice you popping up behind him. Okay. I'm going to spend luck point to use luck instead. Okay. And then you said sneak? Sneak, yep. Definitely a sneak. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, then I'm going to use our three AP. Mm-hmm get me two more dice and I'm going to re-roll one re-roll one of the 18s 
Okay, you can re-roll, you can the, re-roll other the other 18. There Ooh. you go. Four <laughs> successes, getting one AP total back. So we're now at one AP, and I needed to mark off one more luck point. Don't worry, guys. I'm still over five. Yeah. So now that we're all in the same general area, so Rambunctious Catherine and Mr. Chopek, you're still engrossed within um, Fusion Susan's... I don't even know what to call them. Story saga. Yeah, stories is a good word. Yeah, erotic fan fiction. Yes, there erotic go. fan that's fiction. It. Mm-hmm. Boom. I think that's what we got to go with. Uh, that's a good choice. I agree. Yeah. If I and see them, Fusion right. Susan Distracted. slash Les Son of Adam. Yes, and I've worst... commanded uh, Chopek to write it down because we're gonna start. We're gonna sell this story. I am just. I'm doing like the you know the, the geometric shapes you draw <laughs> on things when you're waiting cool for like, a phone call. In yeah, I do the cool ass. I, yeah, just. Random j- j- doodles. <laughs> so the worst part about this is the more I read about her in the module, she seems like the type who is definitely like on fanfiction.net, on archive of our own, of yeah. space battles, <laughs> all the yes. fanfiction sites, yes. and all her stories are her tag with the last son of Adam. It's yeah. bad. <laughs> But what matters is uh, Muki's and... Why am I saying Muki's? Rambunctious Catherine and Mr. Chopek. Uh, you're angled such that as Clayman comes out of the hatch, you do see him appear behind Cantor at the bar. Try to clock that as smoothly as possible without immediately <laughs> going. <laughs> I, I look like, up for my doodling. I'm just like, and I'm like, I check your doodling. Just like, <laughs> you know, get back to it. I would like to get out of this weird situation of being behind the bar. Okay, how are you doing that? Ooh, is that more <laughs> sneaky? Oh, okay, yes, yeah, um, more sneaky. If you don't want to be spotted by Cantor, can I assist him by, um. Screaming loudly, or just <laughs> having some kind of very obvious reaction to something yeah. <laughs> to her okay. erotic fan fiction, perhaps. Yes, I will. I will scream in delight. <laughs> I am going to try to sneak out of here. Then wait, wait, hold on. Can can we hear that scream? <laughs> oh yeah, you can hear it. <laughs> I mean. Not I, did, at, I didn't quite hear it. I think it cut out. I mean, not at not at Eastern time, ten o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. Just dub in a scream. Just dub in the Wilhelm scream here, and that'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no, no, do the Howie scream instead, which is the. What's the? Uh, it's so oh, different. like the the. the it's really a special. Long, uh, Real yeah. One or something. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'll let. Uh, Chopek, you can assist with a charisma and a speech, but uh, I will say that, yeah, Professor, you're still rolling in agility and a sneak. The difficulty on this is now a four. It's gotten even harder. Okay, at least I'm not coming from events anymore. Yep. No, well, now I just look open. Now I'm just look like a, someone trying to get a drink. Um, Am I? Uh, can I? Do, do, are luck spends on assistance? Is that? Is there no? I don't think you can do it on assists, unfortunately. No, that's, Uh, as far as I know, that's the same rule in Star Trek Adventures 2, where you can't really mess with your assist die. I thought you still had re-rolls, but I guess I'm wrong. I might be Uh, misremembering. Sneak. That doesn't matter for right now, so that's good. (laughs) Um, So that's good. (laughs) I will spend one die. I'm not going to make this. I'm at least trying to do well enough where he doesn't punish us drastically for me being behind the bar. Um. Okay, we're not doing well here, guys. Good, great, super. Uh, <laughs> I at least got the one success. So you're trying uh, to get four with three dice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no way I'm gonna get this one, guys. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm very sure. Uh, well. <laughs> so I'm gonna go. Wait, with... you could do a succeed, right? At, at a. If you had three successes, maybe, but this is uh, a difficulty of four. Yeah. Okay, so it goes up one. Okay, I see how that works. Technically, I could do it as a succeeded cost, but there would be three complications, which is just too much. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, it's one for every degree of success you don't have. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm alerted. 
So here's what happens, Professor. Yeah. You turn to start, like, comically tiptoeing away in classic, like, Scooby-Doo fashion. And then Bigelow comes out of the hatch <laughs> and knocks over a series of glasses, causing them to clink and shatter on the ground. Cantor turns and goes, who the hell are you? What are you doing behind the bar? Guards, guards, come, we have problems. Seize them. <laughs> and we are actually going to enter into structured combat unless you mm. don't want to resist. I will not resist <laughs> and just go. I apologize. I wanted a drink and. No, I go with the engineer this story. You were working on something and you fell through. I... Look, man, I wanted a drink. I've been working all day. Yeah, yes. go with that. Go with that. Yeah, 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 that's the one. I never called. I don't recognize you. You're not a member of Mirage. Gods, where are you? Gods. Let's get real Flash Gordon for a second. Oh, some live. Um, oh, no. I will actually yell. Are you going to take me to the Ched Mills to power this place? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. The secret <laughs> underground chamber where your slaves are? <laughs> That is do you add on the real? slave bit? Because I'll actually lower the difficulty if you do. Uh, yeah, I will also add the uh, slaves, like the two people you just took. Okay. Who this let is the going to be a very important role. I'm going to tell you that now. <laughs> Good thing we have a lot of AP. Yeah, it's Hell great. yeah, it's uh, yeah, uh, broken even there, zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at zero. So, uh, bad news. Eight. It is going to be a charisma and a speech. The mm -hmm. good news is it was a difficulty. Oh, hey, chat just gave you an AP. There you go. Good job, chat. Thank That's you. you. You've, oh. done, you've served your purpose. <laughs> um, the good news is that difficulty was going to be a five. The adding on the slave bit lowered it to a four. I'm mm -hmm. just trying to think if there's any other way I can help you here. Um, no, I think you just have to pass a charisma speech oh, at a geez. difficulty of four. Do you uh. have any luck to use your luck? Oh, I have many luck. I'm going yeah, to uh, I'm gonna use a luck point to use a luck point to use my luck skill instead. Uh, okay. I'm going to use a luck point to say the place was oddly silent, so everyone heard me talk about the slaves in the basement. I'll lower it to uh, a difficulty of three. Yes. Uh, it gets me to, I still Why not form. just use all of your luck points to just blink out of existence? That would be <laughs> well, easy. Chad thing. just I gave you another three AP, so you're oh, okay. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. So I will go. I guess I'll go with this. <laughs> Viva la revolucion! <laughs> Chopper uh, will yell. In assistance. You could try to assist me here, after, but I first. Can I? Go, I don't I know. I, I thought I was too busy screaming. <laughs> yeah, you didn't there. hear anything. You could you could play on the fact that I just talked about slaves in the basement. I mean, I I always love to to tack on to anyone right. yelling about slaves in the basement. That's so a, if that's... I give you one more AP, I get to roll five dice now, right? No, so it's one AP for the first one, three AP for two, and then six three AP for three. Six total. Yeah. Six right. total. Okay. So yeah, because you would it's have cumulative. to give me two AP and the four AP that you have to roll five dice total. Just do it. Just I do it. We'll do it. Okay. So you will have nine. I will have five. I'm going to put me back to zero. And then I am going to change this to ten. And roll. Hey, there's my four. There's your four. <gasps> well, it was only difficulty of three, so you actually get an AP back. Okay. Oh, nice. So, a lot of things have happened at once. Let's go through them in order. So first, <laughs> Start Chopic, with the fan you screamed yes. as uh, Fusion Susan was talking about her erotic fan fiction. And uh, she kind of looks taken aback, like, oh, I didn't realize you enjoyed them that much. And then in that awkward <laughs> silence, as you're like, no, or yes, or however you want to play it off, that's when the scream of, oh, yeah, and the slaves you have in the basement echoes across the space. And everybody stops to look at you, Professor. Even Cantor is, like, mouth agape. Like, you have caught him red-handed. And, like, he's trying to go, shut up, shut up, shut the fuck up. I'll give you whatever you want. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> then you saw nothing. Is that the answer you want to go with? 
Kind of, kind of difficult in this incredibly public space where literally everyone saw something. <laughs> yeah, but you should be like, you know, I'm a, here to repair. That's an incredible amount of like <laughs> cognitive dissonance that's going on right now. I, I don't know what to do. You're though. repairing. You're repairing. <laughs> I guess. Would you Look, like you a have, hint? I will give you a hint from the GM if you give me a lock. You, you have the opportunity here to mount a slave-based revolution. So, like, we can take yeah. this place over. It's it just, it's a matter of hours. Uh, you know what? You're right. Uh, should, I think I want to go with the Reva oh Mont Revolution. Oh, my gosh. How many people are here? With us? I guess, I don't know if I, I don't know if I would have enough time to see how many actual guards are in this room. So there's four die, in so. this space. There were four outside, and then there's two downstairs. No, the two that were downstairs came up here. So you've only seen eight guards total so far. Oh, only. So only far. eight yeah. versus four. Maybe At we least should. We could get the slaves on our side, but we should reconfigure this to a bloodless coup, so that they're like, <laughs> "Yeah, we we won't gamble anymore until you release the slaves from custody." Well, oh. if it helps, Fusion Susan actually says to uh, rambunctious Catherine and Mr. Chopek, I'm sorry, did that gentleman just say something about slaves in the basement? I, I believe he did. Yes. And that is unethical, much yeah, like many is... of the things you described in your fiction. <laughs> well, Unless fiction she wrote is fiction. About... <laughs> you, you use your imagination when you write fiction, but... Cantor, what are they speaking about? What are these slaves in the basement they speak of? And Cantor's like, I, I know he's drunk. I don't know. Guards, get him out of here. Why are you not get guards? Come on. Pressing the button under the bar yeah, repeatedly over the and over. Button. <laughs> yeah. I guess I will then uh, say loudly to her, uh, go... Uh, I would know roughly where this room was, right? Directly below the main casino floor. Yeah. I would say go. Ch I would yell out to her, "Go check the room below the casino floor." There's a room below the casino floor. Yes, and it's full of people running on treadmills. Exercise bikes. Which is bikes. the craziest exercise part. Exercise bikes. Exercise bikes. <laughs> running on exercise bikes on the on the seat yeah. of the exercise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're glitching out. Cantor, what what is he talking about? I I I thought we had Brahmin doing that sort of thing. Yeah, a lot of your Brahmin are dead, if you haven't noticed. Cantor, why are our Brahmin dead? Not all. <laughs> I didn't say all. No, no, Cantor, just better, just why are some of this. our Brahmin dead? <laughs> why are a statistically significant portion of our Brahmin dead? <laughs> I, I like that guy. That, guy's this, that guy knows what we're talking about. So, how do I want to handle this? Because you basically figured out his escape plan. You're blocking it, or at least <laughs> Bigelow is blocking it. Yeah, I get why. And Bigelow does have a super sledge, because he would still have his weapons on him. Yup. Bigelow has reconfigured into heavy set mode and is now... <laughs> yeah, he's plugged so... up the escape route. He's dummy thick, as they say. <laughs> I think at this point, the guards are looking between everybody. Like, they're not sure if they should step in for, for Cantor. They're not sure if they should, like, escort you out, start shooting. And it is in this moment that I'm actually going to go to Rambunctious Catherine and Mr. Chopek. You've been helping a little bit here, but what would you like to do in this instance? Because the, the professor's doing a good job of capturing attention and drawing heat to Cantor. What are you two doing while all this is happening? Let me just say, I do have a a plan on the very bottom of possible plans mm -hmm. that, do, <laughs> that does involve a, money. a disgustingly hidden explosive. Okay. I'm a little close to this. That's at the bottom. But, okay. That's at the bottom of the list. So don't jump to this. Please brainstorm first before getting to this part of the plan. <laughs> uh-huh. Anyway, that's just. Go ahead. <laughs> it's on YouTube. I am. I have done my part. Catherine, with your advanced intellect, door. Yeah. it's your charge here. Ooh, yeah. I am not even sure like why I should care about these people, but um, I, I guess. Great, I always do. a great question. <laughs> you do know they're about. They would potentially just try to kill me or turn me into one of the slaves I just talked about. 
I like rambunctious Catherine. Why should I care about them? They're poor. Yeah. They're, they're <laughs> poor. <laughs> yeah. Something like a like 19th century oil baron. I don't know. Who are these people? Yeah, I'm an oil man. Um. Doug Dimido. I can't even say it. I'm laughing. Oh, so. the Dimido. Yeah, yeah, yes. The very same. Yeah. I mean, I guess the ultimate goal is we're trying to get information about the last son of Adam. And uh, and the uh, old man Murray's uh, daughter, niece. What, daughter. Uh, daughter. I don't know what we're supposed right? to do with, with that here. I mean, she's safe. She's, you know, off. We are. Somewhere. We're trying to what we what we have been requested from. Yeah. Our quest giver is make new leadership here and or uh, get the sons of Adam out of here. Ooh, right. what if we try to draft up a contract by saying, well, we will uh, <laughs> we will, you know, I'm telling you this this, um, you know, riot here for um, a transfer of ownership. Yes, this place where, needs new management. They can all keep their jobs. But we own it now, and we will make him shut up and or, put the poor people back in their rightful no, place. See, the problem here is that we have literally no leverage. We no. will be murdered instantly. Um, we need leverage. Um, and just knowing the secret is not enough, because they, no. will, they will murder us to keep that secret. Now, if, say, we take a certain... Um, uh, what was her name? Fusion Susan? Fusion uh, Susan. If we take her hostage and use her as leverage, maybe we have a or, bargaining chip. I, I, or get her on our side. So we I can mean, do both. She, sure, why not? Yeah. She seems to be very inquisitive and maybe a touch upset about hearing about slaves in the basement. So. Is, she, is, she, is she part of the upper echelon of management here? Maybe she knows more than, you know. Uh, you could ask her. I can't. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a middle manager. I'm an accountant. Nobody listens you to could, us. You could. You could say we're far enough in this now that you could start breaking the. Uh, I can't. Roots. I'm committed to the character. Oh, I can't. Okay. <laughs> Chopping's has, gone method. He yeah. hasn't yeah. said the command word yet for you to break method. Yeah. Right. They were like the Manchurian <laughs> candidate. Yeah. Uh, Fusion Susan, do do you know what's uh what's happening here? What uh, uh how can we uh, you know maybe you know, I don't know say we can you know sort these problems out do you know do you have any uh, information here what's 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 the biz well and she says this loud enough that the whole casino can can hear it well it certainly sounds like cantor who was responsible for engineering mirage in the first place has lied to the rest of us original settlers that instead of ethical means of powering the casino He's using cheaters. Hmm, and cheaters, she says cheaters with say. air quotes, if that wasn't obvious. And and oh. by and by cheaters, you mean slave labor. And uh, everybody hears yeah, that. Kind of lean into the mic. Slave labor. Where did you get the microphone? Oh, I handed it to her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. she had a handheld. Yeah, okay. she had. Yeah, that's fancy. Yeah, kind All of right. that. That uh, yeah, old style. The right. the thin Bob Barker yeah. microphone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I was going to see the old one on a stand. <laughs> oh, the old like. Oh, yeah, the so jazz I can kind of lean yeah. into it a yeah. little yeah. bit. Slave labor. <laughs> oh, that's that was that was a bad. You 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 ruined it. Everybody's on. No, everybody <laughs> turned away from now. us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, so Cantor at this part is actually going to try and dive past uh, the professor and past Bigelow. This is going to be I, a very difficult check for him. Actually, uh, uh, I guess well, well, I, well, let's see how the check goes. I would, I may potentially like to spend luck points if things go more in, in his favor. Okay. So I'm going to tell you straight up, he's at a difficulty of five. There's a lot okay. of factors here. Uh, body blocking is one of them. However, you all have graciously given me nine AP, so oh, I'm yeah. going to spend six of it to roll uh, five dice. I here. didn't. I didn't give you any of that. That's on the record. <laughs> I never gave you any. So fair enough. Fair enough. This is. I'm not responsible for this. Is what I'm saying. Uh, well, that's a very low number for five D twenty. So let's expand that out. 
Uh, that is one. That's actually a one, so that's a crit. So that's two, three, four, five. He has enough to escape past you, Professor, unless you do something here. I would like to spend two luck points. Okay. Uh, first one to give Bigelow the combat action of uh, gets to go before anyone else in combat. Okay, that is a luck spend, yep. And then I would also like to do the same thing. So Bigelow and I would both like to try and prevent him from going first. Okay. I'm just trying to remember grapple rules off the top of my head. Uh, let me see, are they on my GM screen anywhere? Let's take a look. Do, 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 do. Uh, they're not and on I would page. say Bigelow will try to grapple, and I will, if he fails, just try to shoot him in the lake. Right, right. No, why would rules for attack be on this sheet? That would just be convenient. I think it's on the more rule. No, nah, that's the one I'm on now, and I'm looking through it. Oh. Um, okay. You could just rule that, I mean, it happens and we're good. I mean, there always is that. Uh, so we did a great job, and everything turned out really well. Yes, yes, yes. Isn't it like opposed? Isn't it yeah, opposed I want to say it's, opposed it's like athletics something. or something. Yeah, what is it? It's ah, opposed athletics, it surely. I found it. Um, so if I read this correctly, uh, if you are grappling him, it is a strength and unarmed with a difficulty equal to your target's defense, which is a one. Oh, okay. Uh, so I guess Bigelow, if Bigelow is doing the grappling, strength and unarmed, difficulty of one. I don't have Bigelow. Okay, I will Bigelow it. Um, yeah, you'll big roll it. He does not have. Oh, you know, oh yeah, because he's a thing. Uh, yeah, it he's would a be robot. His so, bot. What, what's his two things? He has body, and what's the other one? Mind. Mind. Yes. So it'd be body because body is the physical trait for uh, NPCs that aren't human. I mean, he's got a whole special thing because he's constructed like a oh. companion, right? Oh, never mind then. Yeah. So you, you, sorry, you said it was strength and athletics? Unarmed. Unarmed. Okay. He does not have that. Um, okay. So just strength then. So just strength, which is a five. So I mean, for some reason, I can't click that from the sheet. So I'll just do the, okay, attribute five, skill nothing. Okay. Um should we spend the one AP to give him another chance at making a yeah. five or under? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I have marked it off our chart. Let's do that. Here we go. Literally nothing. Um, How much luck does he have? That seven came close. Bigelow has no luck. I don't think. Oh, interesting. Robots don't get luck, do they? They still get a base minimum of four luck. Oh, then now, yes, he does actually have that, luck. He's got four. Yes. Then here's the question. Does the GM will allow a robot half luck because this is a special like design character? Points. He's a companion. Yeah. So yeah. He is a companion. Yeah, that's, so I'm going to say, yeah, you can you can okay. spend luck here. You have four okay. luck points, sir. Let's let's do this then. Let's um, how much is it? One point to reroll one D20 or mm -hmm. up to. OK. Yep. So, and remember that once you reroll, you can't re reroll. Right. You can. Yeah, he can roll a different one, just not the same. Not the same one. Mm -hmm. So let's let's just go all in. Yeah. Yeah. All in. Okay. So I'm gonna reroll Under caps. literally every one of these. He, that brings his luck down to one. Mm -hmm. And here we go. <laughs> Herbert Did you roll Walker another Christ. seven? <laughs> yeah. I rolled an addi I rolled two seven. There's a, seven happened again, and then there was an additional seven, which I'd argue since we're in a casino should count differently. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, you know who mm -hmm. knows. I'm if just gonna try to shop pick spends a luck, I'll let three sevens mean something. <laughs> yeah, we gotta hear some uh uh yeah, like lottery winning sounds, the casino. Mm -hmm. You do it, you do it right now. How how you much do it right now? How much luck did you want me to spend? Just one. Just one? Alright, I'll do it. <laughs> okay. So with speed and grace formerly not seen within a Mr. Handy unit. Uh, as Cantor tries to dive past Bigelow, Bigelow quite literally grabs Cantor with the pincer arm by the throat. And Ooh. Cantor goes... <laughs> and uh, 
he doesn't like choke or Bigelow doesn't choke Cantor out, but he kind of holds him up. So he's having trouble breathing and goes, hey, boss, I caught this one. What do you want me to do with him? Oh, if you would. All right. Enough of this this voice. Um, <laughs> if you would, Bigelow, please uh, make sure to restrain him and uh, ensure that he receives uh, the opportunity to uh, enjoy proper judgment. Yeah, you got it, boss. Might I say it's a mighty fine pleasure to hear you dulcet tones once more. If this is an attempt to renegotiate during a crisis situation, I both appreciate your initiative and damn it at the same time. But boss, you always told me that the best time to renegotiate is under pressure. Oh no, you are very much correct, but I still loathe your very soul for attempting it. Sorry, your spirit. I don't have either, boss. Don't correct me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. So uh, we're going to just fast forward just a tiny bit. Not a whole lot. Uh, at this point, Cantor has been tied up, made to sit in a chair, tied to the chair. He's tied up. He's not going anywhere. Mm. There's um, a single flashlight. There's a single bulb lamp on him. Yeah. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Sweating. Um, yeah. At this point, all of the guests of um of mirage have either left or are in the process of leaving so it's just you and the staff here at this point and fusion susan is more or less going in on cantor and you can tell that she is livid she's not just pissed she's not just angry she is livid and a lot of it is um not so charitable things about Cantor and what he's done for Mirage. And to give you a little taste, she says, you know, when we lost our original vault and you said, oh, I have a wonderful idea of this moving casino and we can make so much caps. We made it very clear that we weren't going to do anything that would get, oh, I don't know, fucking slaves. And Slave Cantor labor. <laughs> Every time someone you. says slaves, just... <laughs> R rambunctious cats yeah. is just and don't don't Catherine do not quit your day job <laughs> but um legally you I? can't quit anyway yeah was I? <laughs> all right contract. so uh cantor uh very reluctantly says look susan you know that we've had some trouble keeping the lights on and yeah originally we were using brahmin don't get me wrong but we just couldn't keep the Brahmin alive long enough. You know how hard it is out there and why people keep coming here, because it's a safe place. So, you know, the, the last son of Adam might have approached me and maybe we struck a deal. Have you considered solar panels? You have a rather large roof. And he looks at you as if you're suggesting, like, a fusion reactor to a caveman. Oh, he's that type of engineer. Uh huh? His titles are fake. Yep. It's just at a very low level. He's a level one engineer. Power he, from sun. He knows rock good, and rock sometimes <laughs> help machine go. Sun Save make you good. warm. Sun also power thing. Now you're just insulting him. I think he still won't get it. <laughs> uh, even the categories. Yeah, here, hey, Danners. Yep, he agrees. The resident, <laughs> you know how casinos have a resident cat. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but a, uh, a, a hairless Persian. Yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah. But uh, Susan, for her part, she says, "A deal. What did you agree to, Cantor? Because this better be a very good deal, or I will have words with you and the last son of Adam." And Cantor kind of sighs and goes, all right, look, you, you, you know, Murray, you, you know, the old drunk. Well, uh, I, uh, I needed uh, to give her away. And uh, if uh, we, you know, we gave her many that uh, they wouldn't, they wouldn't take any more of the original settlement. Uh, they, would, they wouldn't take anyone else from the vault. But again, we, we, we needed to power the casino. So, you know, cheaters, they got to pay. Uh, and right before everybody, Susan cocks back her hand and does the most masterclass backhand that any of you Ooh. have ever seen. Yeah. Get and Susan says, 
I can hardly believe what you're telling me. You're telling me that that pleasant gentleman, sorry, that bastard came in here, wooed me, and then tried to, what, indoctrinate a cult underneath our very noses? How dare you, sir? How dare you? And she slaps him again. <laughs> I'm not stopping this. No. Oh, I'm very entertained. Slave labor. <laughs> can you develop literally any more lyrics for this song? Because uh, you can't no. just say the chorus over and over again. <laughs> no, a broken it's not how songs work. No. Oh, okay, all right. Well, it depends if you're using AI songs. Which small tangent here? <laughs> there actually are sure. pure AI songs now. Like it's a thing. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, my favorite is actually uh, "It's Time to Shit on the Company's Dime." It's actually actually a rather good song, <laughs> especially for AI. Yeah, the bo yeah, boss makes a, a, a dime, you make a nickel or whatever it is. I'll, I'll boss link makes it, a dollar. I'll, I'll tell you what. Yeah. I'll link it in the, the video yeah. description and I'll link it to you on Discord after. Yes. Um, but you know that that song is constructed out of human bits uh, that those human artists have not been paid for. Oh yeah, of course, um, of course, because that's yeah, how it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. AI slave labor. Yeah, yeah exactly. But don't. I guess my question is... Don't. <laughs> I guess my question is, do you want to get any information out of Cantor before Susan finishes doing whatever she's doing? Where's all your caps? Is it extortion need... now? <laughs> yeah, they might need that, you know, to run their establishment, Kate. Well, you know, what if we drew up a... Yeah, maybe I'll talk to... Um... Fusion Susan real quick. Mm -hmm. Looks like you, you're having a falling out here. What if, uh, if you need new leadership here, what if we drafted up a very long uh, contract here as proof that we cannot uh, lie to you like this heathen here and uh, you know, a, a document of a mutual understanding and we become the new owners of and you can you can uh you know uh you know you're you're like in charge here you manage everything but we would be the owners chop x face right now is classic i love it <laughs> but uh two things one when you said it looks like you're having an uprising here i just imagine clippy just clippy, showing up. yeah yeah um <laughs> but fusion <laughs> susan sighs and says Look, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but I'm going to be frank with you. If what Cantor has told everyone is true, and we go downstairs and release the slaves, there's not going to be power for Mirage anymore. And without power, there's no sense in staying here. Frantically look at Ren. <laughs> Fusion power? <laughs> uh, I would need time, but I could arrange... Some form of power just require probably a lot of materials and time, which I don't know if you guys have. Mm, probably not. Hold on. This is a casino. Oh. There are a lot of moving parts that generate kinetic energy. Could all of this energy then be collected and transferred into actual motion? Yes, but you see the issue is motion power gets used. Some of that power when it's used goes away. So there's every time you do it, you have less. You don't just have infinite power. Ah, oh, yes, the second law of thermodynamics, says Susan. <laughs> Wait, why aren't you the engineer? Well, because I wanted to her. sing. And you can besides, do... most of oh. my sciences is actually dealing with psychiatry. So I only know a little oh. bit of the engineering stuff. Well, solar panels are pretty easy. I pull out a manual on how to wire a basic solar... <laughs> Just pull out a pamphlet. Have you seen the, the word of the good soul? Have you heard the good word? Yes. <laughs> yeah, like, like the hardest part would be finding the battery storage enough to power the city. But like you guys have the room to produce enough power with solar to run this place. I did the math when I was outside looking at that. You're actually quite impressive building you have here. This guy loves making shit. Just let him do it. He'll do, do you it say that in character? No. <laughs> I, well, then Chopik would say something like, uh, what uh, Professor Clayman is suggesting is that uh, he, as a consummate crafter, could produce an array of solar panels that could be affixed upon the roof of your uh, traveling casino establishment, which would then provide all of your power needs. 
providing uh, you the opportunity to focus on increasing your revenue growth uh, through adjustments, uh, certain small tweaks in the casino environment, which we could oversee for a small consult consultation fee. And a large contract. And I think Susan actually kind of laughs at that and says, you know, when you first walked in here, I thought you were just another mark, but I could see that I'm dealing with consummate professionals. All are an expert in something. Yes, which speaking of, she bats hand canter again, just out of nowhere, <laughs> just straight up backhands him again. We need to decide what to do with Cantor here. Well, I think uh, in... In a sense of frontier justice, perhaps we can use Cantor at least for a moment to partially provide power to the facility. After all, he uh, facilitated so much pain and suffering on the part of the cheaters that it's only fair that he e experienced that same pain and suffering. I quite like that idea, Mr. Chopic. I quite like that idea. And yeah. So, long story short, you guys actually found a way through the mo this this part of the module um, that did not involve shooting up the place. Which, well done there. Almost um, did. Almost did. <laughs> me actually, yeah, we were very close. You were very close. Yes, it, it almost came. If again, had you not succeeded on that charisma check, things would have gone south. Um, but here's what I'm going to tell you for your reward, because this is the end of the quest. So, you freed the prisoners, which means that the uh, Mirage Casino will be without power until you either add those solar panels or something else. Um, so, they're going to have to do some temporary power, you know, some kind of arrangement, you know, maybe getting Cantor to, you know, spin really fast. Who knows? Cantor can basically keep the, like, the lights on, but like, it's not going anywhere, right? right. Yeah. Um, so that's what happens there. Um, all of the prisoners, unless you want to keep them for some weird reason, they're going to go Summarily back executed. to where... Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they're going to go back out into the wasteland where they belong or where they <laughs> free, originally free, came from. They're free. <laughs> free yeah. range prisoners. Free range prisoners. <laughs> um, also known as the wasteland. Also known as wasteland. The and good news, though, is because you didn't harm any innocent bystanders and you didn't harm any of the prisoners... You actually are all going to get a reputation rank bonus, not just with Mirage, but with every other settlement. Wow. Ooh. The next thing is that since you brought up and brought into light that the last son of Adam had a deal with Cantor, that also will give you a boost to every other settlement. And I will tell you this much as a meta level fact. That's going to make a lot of the children of Adam maybe go into hiding or retreat to the glowing sea. Okay. It also encourages me to eventually run for president. Perhaps, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll support. I'll, yeah. I'll vote. Of course you will. It's in your contract. Cool. You got to yeah. read that thing. <laughs> Especially while you still have your extra four intelligence. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how I learned about the dividends. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in a, in a couple of scenes, you're yeah. just going to be like... I'm just going to reinvest You're going to be so. licking campaign stamps yeah. or something. Yeah. Just... Hey, we do get the recipe once we let his daughter know that he is safe. That is true, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we may have a moment where Professor has over 10 intelligence. Then he, all of both of you can have a crippling addiction to a mind-altering substance. Ah, it's like there was fantastic. a movie on yeah. this. Was it Limitless? Was the movie on this? It was Limitless. You could take you could yeah. take a pill, yeah, and yeah. be and be um Bradley Cooper? Is that the one? I think Maybe. it was. Yeah. I haven't seen the movie yet though. I, would, I think we should probably focus less on Limitless and more on the Requiem for a Dream aspect of this whole addiction <laughs> process. <laughs> probably, yeah. All right. Well, uh, this is where we're going to end today's session, but before we close out, I do want to say I've already told the players this, but at this point, we're kind of in the free roam part of Act 1. Uh, at this point, you have completed most of the quests that are available to you. There are a few settlements that you haven't checked out yet that you could, but what I would say is that whenever you all feel is appropriate, we will move on to Act 2. But I want to make sure that everybody's aware that we are at a tipping point. That from this point on, once you advance the main story once more, 
things are going to get very, very real. We should quick save. Yes, you sure. should yeah, quick spam. save, back yeah. up your save. F5, you know. F5. We should, we should get loot and get better equipment. We and should prepare. Not yes. die. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe we should do check in. Maybe with some of the other settlements just to kind of reap our reputation rewards. To a, to a twenty-four hour uh, all crafting stream. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> Marathon. I, I yeah. say, uh, scavenge, visit good neighbor. See if we can find out any city we haven't yes. done yet. We know sure. big. Yeah. Good neighbor has my uh, little uh, love. Your secret note. admirer, Your love yeah. interest. Yeah, yes, secret admirer. Yeah. Uh, which I don't think from the knows about the yet. bag. Yeah, yeah the no. backpack wormhole. No uh, alternate dimension where I peeked into the professor's there's, backpack and there hit was there. there there was there was a, a note. Yeah, in there, Hugh had a vision. <laughs> we also it's, need it's all sorts of goodies. To stop at uh, Beatsville to let girl know about father <laughs> and also ask her, ask Minnie about Minnie. Uh, what she knows about your tattoo. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have things the we need to do. Yeah. So we, we need to make basically do a like a world tour. Yeah, sort of a grand we basically a world tour of yeah. like, yeah, everyone thinks we're yeah. great before, let's just say, the Fire Nation attacks. I mean, that's. Kind right of, you know what? I'm not gonna spoil it. I'm, I don't <laughs> saying that maybe. I don't maybe understand that reference. It's not Goldeneye related, so that's that's all I. Mean. <laughs> you know what? That reference yeah, is too even. modern. They just released a show on Netflix, right? That was the first one of it. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. too 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 fresh. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, with that, uh, twist stick around because we're gonna raid somebody. But YouTube, this is where we say goodbye. Bye, YouTube.